last sessions we have discussed about uh, what topic ipv4 address configuration and ipv6 address configuration right so day before yesterday we started with ipv4 address ipv4 address is 32 bit address present in uh, decimal format so 32 bits are be divided into octet format each octet should be in a 8 bits first octet second octet third octet fourth octet four octets each octet is being separated by using dot and we clearly discussed how to convert from binary to decimal and decimal to binary also and ipv4 address total range of ipv4 address range is 0.0.0.0 255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
Right, perfect. You know, so initially we have studied about uh, network fundamentals. First four points in the day one. And types of networks. Which were means to form a network. About NIC, about media, about networking devices. And about topologies. And uh, logical address with IPv4 and IPv6 we are discussed, right? So today, let me continue with uh, the call. So what is protocol? So today's session is very, very important. I try to focus on the today's session, mostly, mainly. What is protocol? Rules, okay, good. Protocol means we have a set of rules that are available, right? The rules. Rules and regulation, okay. Let me explain some uh, small history about uh, networking system. Long back, uh, when network is started, long back. We have some companies who manufacture networking devices, like computers, like companies are Apple Company, Novel Devices, Microsoft Devices. Like these companies in the order, like long back, when uh, network is started. Now, Apple company has been developed like a uh, uh, manufacture some device, Apple device. Also, let's say Apple device. Now, Apple device to Apple devices only can communicate, can share the files, can share the folders, can share the mails. So, how they can communicate Apple device and Apple devices, how they can communicate means to talk to each other, like Apple company itself is developed one language call, one rule call. One protocol called Apple Talk. The long ways of so these long ways can work between only Apple vendor device. The same like a novel companies are being some devices are being manufactured. So these novel devices, novel devices only can communicate. So how novel device and novel device can communicate means the novel device it, uh, organization itself has developed one long ways called. IPX Internet Protocol Exchange. So these IPX will be work between novel to novel devices only. Similarly, Microsoft uh, devices can communicate with only Microsoft devices. So how Microsoft and Microsoft device means like Microsoft company itself is all one protocol called NetBio. So this is the happening in the long back. Only Apple device to Apple devices. But what about nowadays? Like I'm using the example, I'm using here HP laptop. What about yours? Maybe you can use what? Dell, and maybe you can using what Samsung, maybe you're using some different mobiles companies, maybe you're using a Apple device, right? Like how many vendors in the market now? Mobile phone vendors, laptop vendors, desktop vendors, servers, cameras, like any communication devices in the market, in the international market worldwide, how many vendors are available? So there are thousands of vendors, right? Any device can communicate to any other vendor, right? So how is possible nowadays? But it's not happening in the long back. In the long back, what happened? Apple device to Apple device only can communicate by using rule is what, protocol is what, Apple talk. Like novel device, novel device only can communicate by using which one? IPX. But nowadays, so we have developed one universal language, one universal protocol. So 
that universal protocol is going to communicating like multiple vendors so that protocol is tcp ip transmission control protocol over internet protocol so data transmission is possible in a internet so if you are accessing internet means what is the main back end protocol is what tcp ip is there we have purchased one computer one laptop have purchased is hp vendor so in this hp vendor laptop generally we used to download we used to log in so we used to install which operating system Like we can install any operating system, right? Like a uh, Windows operating system, we can install Linux operating system. Like if you install any operating system along with your OS, you can have protocol is what TCP/IP. Like any communication device, we have a TCP/IP protocol is it? So by using TCP/IP protocol only, data transmission and communication is possible. For example here. I am from Hyderabad. This is my laptop. Now, we are meeting. We are 14 members. Let's consider we are from a different different location, right? So I am from Hyderabad. Maybe one of my friends from. Location. See you. Now my laptop is connected to internet. My friend laptop is also connected to internet. So from source device to destination device, if both are connected to internet, how much time will take to communicate to share from files anything? Within a second, we can share, right? From where to where, from which location to which location, from Hyderabad to US, we are within a second. We can send the message, we can send the mail, we can transmit your data, right? By using internet. So, these things everything everyone can come to know. The thing is, from Hyderabad to US, in between, what are the connectivities been there? What type of device are part of a in between? What type of technology has been involved in the back end process? All those things clearly we need to understand. So, what's just generally we connect internet and we open any web browsers or we open any applications like WhatsApp, just we're sending what high information. But we don't know you are device connected to router or switch or firewall or cables, what type of cables. So all the technologies back and forth, what happened in the back and forth. So how the backend process is happening means based upon which protocol is TCP IP. Like how this TCP IP is working. How TCP IP is data transmission possible means in 1984 we have one organization. The organization has been introduced one a reference model which is ASI. So that organization is a ISO International Organization for Standardization. So, this ISO is developed one a reference model how TCP IP is working. So, the, that reference model is a OSI. OSI is not a protocol. So OSI is only for a reference model how TCP IP is functioning. To understand TCP IP, have one standard international standard reference model is what OSI. But protocol is what? Protocol is TCP IP. Actual communication happening through TCP IP. Like how TCP IP is working to understand. We have one international standardization is there. So that standardization for reference model is what? So it's a reference model. So it stands for open system
ISO is developed in 1984. It is a layer architecture consists of several layers. Each layer defines set of functions, set of rules. Today, our class is each and every layer, what is the function, what is the rules and responsibilities we will clearly discuss one by one. Try to copy these notes. This is how many layers? Seven layer. Like in seven layers, top layer is application, presentation, session, transform, network, data link layer, and physical layer. Number wise, layer one, layer two, layer three. The top layer, which is layer seven, presentation layer six. Question is five. Like this. Top three layers we call user support layers, or we can call it a software layer. Bottom three layer. Network support layers, or we can call it as a hardware layer. Middle one, which is transport layer, we call it as what? Four layer of OSI. So copy the uh, copy this notes clearly, and see one by one clearly this is uh, from top layer to uh, physical layer.
copy. Yeah, end of the session, I'll explain it clearly about uh, lab. Right, uh, top layer. The top layer is what? Application. Let me explain what is the clear layer application layer will be. application layer generally users will use computers right or mobile phones or tabs whatever you have a smart device so the use of these devices why we use a computer for what purpose we use computer to communicate the other services data communication you now as a user why know why we use computers if you have a computer now we can open web application we can send the mails, we can send the data, right? We can download the files, we can upload the files. Uh, we can monitor, we can uh, live, live, like conference, video conference, video call. As a user, why we require the computer's means to access services? So what services means as a user, if you want to open a web browser, so to open the web browser in the backend protocol, we require HTTP. As a user, when you are using any downloads or uploads, backend protocol is what? HTTP. As a user, when you are sending mails, it can be any mail, service is what? SMTP. HTTP, FTP, SMTP. Like for remote login purpose, we have one service called uh, Telnet, for DNS, for name service, for IP service, DHCP, it's all services, right? Color. Generally, computers can work with what? OS, operating system. So what is the use of operating system? Operating system is a interface between what? Operating system is a interface between users to interact with hardware, computer to also like. Like operating system is a interface between the users to interact with hardware components. Now what about NIC? NIC is also interface to form a network on device on the device to form a network is it similarly the user to interact with services as a user directly we cannot we cannot interact with any services so between the user and services in between we required one interface so that interface is a application The user can interact with any services through what application only. Now here, application layer is a interface between the user to interact with services. It can be network service. It can be application. Let's say example, you want to send a mail. Uh, this is my desktop here. If you want to send a mail, Gmail or Yahoo Mail, whatever. So tell me what is the process, guys? This is my desktop. First step, what one, what I need to do? I want to send a mail. What is the first step I want to do? Browser. Open a browser. Okay, right. Open. Now my requirement is a. I want to log in net banking site. Any any net banking site. This is my desktop. What is the first step? What I need to do? The first step. Open browser. 
So to access any services, so first we need to open what browser. So that browser is nothing but application. So to interact with any services, we can interact with any services through application, even from your smartphone. You want to send a, a message from WhatsApp. So first we need to install what WhatsApp application is installed. Next we access Facebook. So we have to open web browser or Facebook application app. Applications are required. Right? So here application layer is a interface between the user to interact with services. This is the first uh, top layer responsibilities. You can see it is responsible for providing an interface for the users to interact with application services or networking services. So the best example of application is a web browser. Right? Generally, mostly we use what web browser only. Right? Now, as a user, you want to open the web browser, uh, web, web access protocol is what? HTTP. As a user, if you want to download or uh, upload, service is what? FTP. For mails, SMTP. For remote login, TLNet. For name services, DNS. For IP services, DCP. These are all the names user can understand. But what about my computer? Like, how about my PC? How my PC can understand? User request is a mail. User request is a uh, like a downloads. So how my device can understand user request is a web service. So device can understand the names. No. So user can understand what names. What about devices? So devices can understand services based upon the numbers. So that numbers we call port number. Numbers we call what? Port number. See here, port number for HTTP, port number 80, FTP, port number 21, SMTP, port number 25, LNET, port number 23, DNS, port number 50, the HCP port number 67 and 58. So, based on these numbers, devices can understand which service user request is. So from your computer, if you are trying to download, now my piece can understand, okay, user request is 21. FTP protocol coming to picture. So as a user, if you sending a mail, so what do you understand? Okay, user request is a port number 25. Names for user identification, numbers for device identification code. These are a few examples of port numbers. Regularly, mostly we use this way of port numbers. Port numbers are very, very important. In interviews will really ask the questions about port numbers, service and port numbers. And in the real time, uh, in the real time, we used to configure firewalls, maybe router configuration. So all completely networking mostly will depends upon what port numbers. We try to uh, remember important port port numbers. Anyhow, we have a mostly like 40,000 port numbers are available. Let me show you all the port numbers, services, port numbers, and protocols. From your computers, if you open C drive, Windows, and 32. File open the services here. Here you can get all the port numbers. So this file contains port numbers for well known services defined by IANA. 
here can get the service name port number and this service belongs to which protocol in alias's name also uh, for example here tp port number 21 comes under this protocol telnet port number 23 tcp mtp Mail transfer protocol. This SNTP port number 25 works on the TCP to a mail packet. I can get all the port number here. HTTPS protocol. This is yes. port 43. the part a drive windows system 32 driver is Application layer is a interface users to interact with services. Now data flow from application layer. This layer is what presentation layer. Let's see clearly discuss about presentation layer responsibilities. What presentation layer will do? Presentation layer is responsibility of providing standard format to your data. Standard format. your computer you are trying to send some data to your friend so to send any information let's say you want to send a high information what's the first method what's the first step open web browser so if we open web browser or any application this layer will come in the picture like to send the data here so first uh, Player is what application layer will come in the picture, right? The next one is what presentation layer. Now, based upon type of data, you are sending data is a it can be text file or it can be image file or it can be audio, or it can be video, it can be any OS operating system files like any like image files, right? These all are files we call original files. So these original files are being converted to standard format. Standard format. Is a text file. Your text file standard format is what? Dot txt file. Your image file have a standard format is what? Dot jpeg dot jpeg these audio files dot mp3 like for videos dot mp4 so converting from original files to standard format so this process we call encoding so what presentation will do encoding in method from whenever from your computer if you are sending a text hello for uh, hello friend how are you is the text you send the text application layer will come in the picture now next layer is a presentation layer what presentation is doing is okay your text your original file is a text format right convert it to dot txt now dot txt files are being transmitted dot txt files are receiving destination computer now destination computer have one protocol is what tcp ip in the destination also right like what destination TCP protocol will do? So when it is received, .txt files, your .txt files means standard format, 
again is being converted to original file. In the source side, a process is encoding. In destination side, the process what decoding process. But in between, in the middle, your complete data is in a standard format. Dot txt files. Dot jpg files. Dot mp files. Like the presentation layer, a responsibilities are what first one is what encoding. And uh, destination side, decoding. Not only encoding and decoding, presentation layer responsibility is a encryption and decryption. Let me see what is encryption and decryption. From your computer, internet setup is connected to the Wi Fi router. Wi Fi router to local service provider, service provider to internet, In internet, all public servers are connected. Example, bank.com, facebook.com, all servers are connected. As a user, I want to open my Facebook page. Or as a user, I want to open my net banking website. What's the process? Tell me, guys. As a user, now I want to open bank website. What's the first step? The first step is a open the browser. So open the browser means which layer will come in the picture here? Application layer will come in the picture, right? Okay, right. I have opened. Uh, Web browser. So once I open the web browser, if I type here www.hdfc.com, so once you type www.hdfc.com, the web services we have a two types of services. One is a HTTP service, and one more is what HTTP yes service. So what is the difference between HTTP and HTTP yes? Is the difference right? Yeah. If you see what's the difference between HTTP and HTTPS, the HTTPS is not more secure. Secure, it means HTTP is also secure. Let me see clearly what is the difference between HTTP and HTTP. The user have opened one web browser. So by using this web browser, I'm typing my net banking page. Let me type here www.dfc.com. I'm using here HTTP service. Now, once you type hdfc.com, your hdfc website will ask what username and password. Right? So if you're typing username, like username is a B A L U. My password is B one A two L three two four. This is my username and password. Username and password and typing right. So once you type your username and password, your complete username and password is going to dealing router, dealing router to ISP router, ISP router to internet. Now internet is a public network, right? Internet is a public network means everyone is connected to internet. Like attackers, hackers, everyone is connected. So what attackers are doing is they are ready. If they capture your traffic, if they capture your packet, if you open that, they can come to know what is my username, what is my password. After entering username and password, to log into net banking page, your transactions, your bank balance, your account, every information. So HTTP will send and complete data in a normal text, clear text, plain text. Normal, which can be easily readable, understanding. So what HTTP is doing is, so completely your username, is and passwords, your OTP, everything will send is what normal text. So HTTP is not at all secure. 
is of HTTP. Now, if you use a HTTPS protocol, HTTPS service, I'm using here HTTPS. So, what HTTPS is doing is, so when you provide your username and password in the normal text, it's going to convert it to cipher text. Normal text is converted to what? Cipher text. So, converting normal text to cipher text, this process we call encryption. Uh, what is cipher text and what is normal text? Example here, cipher text. One, three, five, zero, three. You know what is one, three, five, zero, three? It can be my number, it can be my vehicle number, it can be my mobile number, it can be my address, like any anything it can be happen, right? But you don't know exactly so what is 13503. Now let me take a look about uh, normal text. Like here. This is guy. March, right? Yeah, March. If my password is March, here my password is a my password is starting is a March. The M in alphabets A B C D E F like M will come under. Letter say thirteen. M A R T S. This is how many characters in the March? Five. Five. March is a which month of the year? Third month. Zero three. Like this has been converted, is coded. Not exactly, just for example to understand. I'm telling you. SSL certificate is already default in your web browser. We don't need to uh, enter, we don't need to install it. Are any web browser? It can be Mozilla, Firefox, it can be Google Chrome, Internet Explorer. Like any web browser, it's been default. It's been the traffic is being generated from my computer all the traffic let me capture any one traffic open the traffic let me know what is the text in my cipher it is what Again, uh, one more responsibility of application uh, presentation there is what encryption and uh, decryption of business information. It is responsible for defining a standard format to the data. This is the data presentation, like encoding, decoding, encryption, decryption, or some. Uh, examples of uh, format 
फॉर्मेट काफी फॉर्मेट लग गया ए बी जी ए एफ वॉइस वॉइस फॉर्मेट वीडियो फॉर्मेट डिस्क्रिप्शन में लिखित है प्लस ए एफ data is flowing from application to presentation presentation to next layer is a application layer let me take session layer responsibilities user device I have a gmail account I have a facebook account I have a sb account everyone has a gmail account right your mails inbox inbox send items like is all those things will be stored in your computer uh, gmail server there all the data information will be stored inside your data uh, inside your pc that is gmail account gmail server right similarly in facebook your posts your likes and your sharing so all the posts will be stored in a inside your computer facebook server in facebook server database will be stored right like your bank balance bank transactions like your history of the bank uh, transactions all those things will be stored in your uh, bank server right now as a user how we can uh, how we can utilize that information like i want to open my uh, facebook page so to open the facebook page so first we need to open what web browser or facebook application means which layer will come in the picture first application layer right so i have opened one application is a web browser or application facebook application then i'm typing uh, www.facebook.com so once you provide your usernames and passwords uh, what presentation will do will convert into cipher text so here presentation will come in the picture so once you provide your username and passwords now session is being established from user to Facebook server, your session is being established, right? The connection is being established. So now we are not inside your PC. Now we inside it is with Facebook server. Like uh, two fifty seven p.m. Second April twenty twenty. You have login Facebook dot com. Like after login Facebook dot com. Like how much time? How much? How long you are inside the Facebook server? 
You are spending two hours or three hours or one minute or two minutes or ten seconds, like how much time you are inside the Facebook server, your session is being maintained. Like we have started your Vivek application. It's been how many times it's been happened? 50 uh, minutes, right? 50 minutes has been done. It means my session has been established already 50 minutes back. So still my session has been maintained between my PC, my computer and Webex server, from your computers and Webex server, the session is being maintained now. They're all customers, like all students, session is being maintained by Webex server and your user computer. Like once our meeting is been finished, a class has been finished, then what we'll do, we'll end the meeting. Like once your, your FB post verification likes, comments and being finished, the work is done. You should log out, right? what happened here the session is being terminated so when session is being established how long you are inside the session inside the server when your uh, session is being ended is all the maintained by session layer or any server don't think guys like from your phone from your smartphone from your personal uh, computer have visited so and so on web server and so and so on date and so on so on time everything is being recording in your internet so just if you open the Facebook server history, now you can get all the information from so and so on user, so and so on date, and so and so on time. He log in on Facebook server with uh, some IP address, with some service provider from from location. Location. This all information is being stored. Now after login to uh, two o'clock fifty seven p.m., like how long you're inside the Facebook server, and when you log out, this all the information we can get from Facebook. So generally, if anything happened wrong, the crimes in cyber crimes is happening. What the police department will do? Will they contact to Facebook.com, Facebook servers, Facebook team? So from there, they can get the information, collect the information. Okay, so and so on service provider, so and so on mobile MAC address is logged into Facebook server. Basic information. So these all the sessions are being maintained by section layer. Simple, uh, simple understand language. Security God and office and maintain one book. Entry book. When some outside person is coming to inside the office, what will they will do? Their name, their phone number, date, time. He enter the book. Into inside, and when, when you're going to outside again, we'll take your signature and uh, uh, log out time will be entered, right? Like after three months, after four months, after four years, like when police officers came for your office, I need a uh, so and so date logs information. You open the book, okay, some person has been entered so and so date and so and so time. Like inside the office, he spent two hours, three hours, they can get the information, right? Similarly, same thing for a user when you log into Gmail. How long inside the Gmail? When you log into SBI, these are all the logs information, these are the sessions are being maintained by session layer. It is responsible for establishing, maintaining, and terminating sessions. So each session we call interaction, these are the sessions are maintained by one ID called session ID. These all are soft key layers or application layer. These all will be called software layers or user support layer. Depends upon the protocol. Authentication depends upon what protocol. Authentication is there, but is inbuilt of your application. That is external link. We, we don't know. We just open the web, Facebook uh, Facebook page. That's it. But in the back end process. Facebook server in a web browser, they can extend the authentication method. So whatever you're explaining here, application, presentation, session is completely happening in the back end process. Data flow, 
some application layer to presentation, presentation to session. Now, next layer is what? Transport. Very, very important uh, point here. Transport. So, till now, from your computer, your data is not yet transmitted. Application will do what? To send the data, we need one interface. That is interface application. What presentation layer will do? Whatever the data you have is a text or a audio or video. So what presentation will do? Will provide the format .txt something like. That. So what session layer will do? You have to send to which device? Your destination device. So from source device to destination device, your session will be established. Is only the four, top three layers will do, right? But this layer has a mechanism to transmission your data. So till now your data is not transmitted. Right? Then what happened? Application is interface. Presentation provide a standard format. Session level will establish the session. Now from transport layer has a mechanism for data transmission. Data delivery mechanism only have this layer is a transport layer. So transport layer is a core layer of OSI has a major functionality. Application layer only responsible is what? Interface. Presentation layer only responsible is what? Standard format. Session layer only responsible is what? Sessions are maintained. But transport layer has a major responsibility. We will see one by one. The first one is identifying service, multiplexing and demultiplexing, segmentation, sequencing and reassembling, error correction, flow control. These are the responsibility of transport layer. We will see one by one clearly. The first point is what, guys? Identifying service. So tell me some services. Identifying service. Tell me some services. HTTP. Okay. HTTPS. FTP. SMTP service. Telnet is a service. DNS. DHCP. EFTP, these are the services. These all services majorly will work under two protocols. So some services will work under TCP protocol, some services will work under UDP protocol, transmission control protocol and user datagram protocol. Like HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, SMTP, Telnet, is all the protocols will work under what? TCP protocol. Like DNS, DCP, TFTP, is all services will work under UDP protocol. Transport layer first responsibility is a identifying service. Identifying service means user request is a TCP protocol or UDP protocol. Here we have to come to know what is the major difference between TCP and UDP. Let me show you the notes about the TCP and UDP differences. Transmission control protocol, user datagram protocol. TCP is a connection oriented. UDP is what? Connection less. TCP is a supports acknowledgement. UDP no supports for acknowledgement. TCP is reliable communication. UDP is what, guys? Unreliable communication. Means what? What is connection oriented? What is connectionless? What is reliable communication? What is unreliable communication? Is what, guys? Let me explain clearly now.
Please add the background clearly. Here, host A and host B, two computers are available. Right? C and host B. Now host A want to send the data to host B. I repeat once again. Host A want to send the data to uh, host B. So means here which one is a source and which one is a destination? Host A is a source and host B is what? Destination, right? Okay. Now I want to send some data back. Any mail or any high information, something, you know, image, anything. So we can send the data transmission is possible with the help of two protocols. You can use either you can use a TCP protocol also, or you can use what UDP also. Then what is the difference is so first let me explain about TCP protocol. I am sending data by using which protocol is what TCP. So what TC protocol is doing is this data traffic directly will not send to the host B. Not send the host B. So what TCP is doing is so before sending the data packet to host B, now what host A is doing is we'll send one normal packet and some dummy packet to host to B. The packet is thin. The first point here, host A sends a TCP synchronized packet to host B. You know why? The purpose is so host A is going to making sure that host B is active or down. asking the question hello host b i am sending some data to you are you okay are you able to receive or not it's going to ask one question actually right synchronized hello nikhil hello nikhil nikhil can you hear me Uh, actually, I ask you one question, right? Is uh, a call in Nikhil by using what? Hello. Right? Hello, hello, I'm asking, right? You know why? Because so even even after some time of five to five minutes, every five minutes or every ten minutes, I used to uh, all everyone participants can you hear me? I'm asking, right? You know why? Why because so I'm making sure that everyone can audible or not. Is my line is my connection is a clear or not, or maybe any voice dropping is it something is happening? Anything is what so further? I'm asking repeatedly questions, right? The same thing, the same manner here. What the host device doing is so before sending a data packet, what host is doing is we'll send one synchronized packet to host B. If host B is okay, we'll give the reply. When I ask the question to all of you. So can you hear me? All of you means what you'll say. You open the chat box. Yes, sir, I can hear you, right? You can send the reply. So that type of message we call synchronize acknowledgement. Synac. The first one is syn. Second packet is a synac. Synchronize acknowledgement. So once I receive the synchronize acknowledgement again, I'm sending a thanks to your reply. That is acknowledgement. Like I'm asking you a question, right? So, hello, participants, can you hear me? I'm asking the question. So, you can text me. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Then, what else? You? Okay, all right. Then, we start the class, right? So, this process we call three way handshake process. So, by using TCP three way handshake process, there is no chance for data loss, there is no chance for voice loss. Like whatever we are doing, hello participants, can you hear me? Yeah, you have given a reply. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay, all right, thanks for reply. Then you can class is started. So, like this, if we do every time, then there is no chance for data loss, right? Same thing in your TCP protocol also. You want to send in the data packet, any traffic, what TCP is doing is we'll do 3CP or TCP way and check for.
In TCP three-way handshake process, what is the first message? Synchronize. Second message is what? Connect. Synchronize acknowledgement. And third packet is a acknowledgement. Once TCP three-way handshake process is done, I can see the last one is what? Connection is established. Now between the host A and host B, connection is established. After connection established, now data is being transmitted. Like after connection is established, if it in the data, any chance for data loss in the middle? So that's the reason we call it is a reliable communication. Supports for acknowledgement. Connection oriented means always they are synchronizing. Connection oriented. We go for UDP protocol. UDP protocol, no three way handshake process is a connectionless, no support for acknowledgement, unreliable. We cannot say complete data is being received, transmitted. Maybe there is transfer data loss. Like complete two hours without any asking the questions. If I continuously I am speaking out, class is going. What happened? You are also not responding, you are also not giving the reply. And how I can come to know we can audible or not? Like, how I can come to know you are listening or not? So, no, right? So, maybe there is a chance in the middle you have a maybe two minutes voice drop, or maybe 10 minutes voice drop. Something happened, right? It's unreliable. So, are you getting the point or not? This is also one of the TCP three way handshake process. If it's a three way uh, TCP three way handshake process, what type of communication we have here? Liable communication, connection oriented. Now I can say, like all online participants and me, we are connection oriented because frequently I ask the questions, right? So connection oriented. Similarly, if it's a UDP protocol, connection less, no acknowledgement, unreliable communication. Which is the best protocol? TCP or UDP, the real time, which protocol we use? All right. The thing is, not only TCP, we use both protocols, TCP and UDP both. And where we use UDP protocol? So compared to TCP, UDP protocol is a fast communication, right? But compared to UDP, TCP is a slower. Then why we use your, why UDP is a faster? Why UDP is a faster? Why UDP faster means no three way handshake process, no need to send the synchronized message, no need to wait for acknowledgement, again, no need to send the acknowledgement. If you want to send the data, directly send the data, ask communication, right? Example of where we use UDP. For example, we want to live streaming, like video conference, like uh, video calls. This type of uh, situations, uh, we require a uh, reliable communication or fast communication. Fast communication. Then which protocol had to make use? Use UDP. Use what? UDP protocol. But if we use TCP for live, what TCP will do? Wait, wait. I will send what? Synchronize, acknowledgement, acknowledgement. One connection is established, then I will send the data. Means if you open the video call now, tomorrow I can get the video, right? This is happening in the DCP. Example. But UDP is what? Whatever you are doing, the open the video, fastly will send the reply, will send it to destination device. Maybe your data is lost, whatever. Major difference between TCP and UDP. So TCP is a 
connection oriented video based connection based connection oriented means tcp can support for three way handshake process and udp no three way handshake process means no acknowledgement in tcp three way handshake process what is the first message what is the first packet synchronize second message second packet Synchronize acknowledgement. Third message acknowledgement. Like once TCP TCP three way handshake process is done, now from source device to destination device in between, the connection is what? Established. Let me check here in my command prompt. Please knit that command. What are the services I'm using from my computer? The state of my all the services. It is what? I'm using here. HTTP, HTTPS also I'm using here. In all our connection is First point transport layer identifying service based upon your user request is going to identify this is your DC. Next one is a multiplexing and demultiplexing. Multiplexing means multiple services. Wait a minute. my computer to the Wi-Fi router, Wi-Fi router to ISP, from ISP to your Wi-Fi router, how many links are connected, how many cables are connected generally, only one cable, right? ISP to internet, internet, Gmail, Facebook, Yahoo, Twitter, YouTube, number of services, number of websites. Now from user computer, I have opened one web browser. I'm typing is a YouTube. Service is HTTPS. I have opened one more tab. I'm downloading some movies. I have opened one more tab. I'm sending mail to my boss. So if you open the YouTube means, what is the service here? HTTP. This port number 80. If you are downloading means, so which service here? FTP means port number 21. But sending mails means SMTP port number 25. From one computer, how many services have been running? Multiple services, right? So is all multiple services again reaching to internet with how many cables, how many channels? We have a three cables, have a four cables for each service. So for YouTube only have a one cable, for only mails have a one other on the internet cable. No, right? So like we have a only a single cable, but in the single cable number of services are being going right your youtube traffic is going your mail traffic is going your google traffic is going. like multiple services is being combined and sending to internet after reaching internet youtube request to youtube server mail request to mail server like uh, google request to google server like again what happened here the multiplexing from your computer we have a protocol is what TCP IP protocol is it? So, what TCP IP is doing is if you open multiple services, is all multiple services being combined and sent to internet? In internet, again, we have a protocol is what 
TCP IP. What TCP IP in the internet will do? E multiplexing. YouTube request to YouTube server, FTP request to FTP server, like mail request to mail server, like this. Combining multiple services, you send to what? Right? And internet again, the multiplexing. This is happening in a transport label disease of. Next responsibility is segmentation. Segmentation means what? My computer connected to this, this to router, router to internet something. Uh, switch to switch to your PC. Which port is connected to your PC? From switch port to your PC cable is connected, right? On your computer, which port is cable is connected? RJ45 cable, which port is connected? Internet port. Right. Connected to Ethernet. Not only Ethernet, it can be FE also, fast Ethernet. It can be gigabit Ethernet. All types of interface. Your Ethernet port, fast Ethernet port, gigabit port, these all the ports can support. The maximum maximum transmission units MTU it's only 1500 bytes 1500 but what I'm doing is I'm trying to send some data packet to my one of the friends I'm sending mail let's say this data size is a 5 MB so 5 MB file I'm trying to share in internet. My NIC card can support the maximum transmission unit is what? 1500 bytes only, but I'm trying to send 5 MB. What my NIC selling is that? So hello user, sorry, I cannot forward your traffic because my maximum transmission size is a 1500 bytes, but you are trying to send 5 MB file. Sorry, I'm dropping your traffic. The NIC is not supporting for that. The interface card is only like your data packet should be 9 bytes only, it's not supporting the right now. Transport layer will come in the picture. What transport is doing is the user, no problem. We can share 5 MB file, 50 MB file, or 5 GB file also, no problem at all. I can I can maintain that. I can make sure what transport layer is doing is your 5 MB file is being divided into Smaller, 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 smaller. The transport is making so that each segment should be 1500 bytes. 1500 bytes. 1500 bytes. Like after dividing 1500 bytes, now your NAC card can support or not? Yes, now your network card can support. If your network card is a Ethernet, you can transmit it with 10 MBP speed. If your network card is a 100 MBP fast Ethernet, can transmission with 100 MBV speed. If your network card is a gigabit card, it can transmission what 1000 MBP. So this happening, so this process we call what segmentation. Dividing a large amount of data into smaller packets, smaller segments we call segmentation. So why segmentation is required means your interface card can support MTU values what? 1500 bytes only. Like any data packet size more than 1500 bytes, it should be divided. Small example. Uh, let me take one image. There's my image. Image file. Right click. Go to property. There's a file size here. Right? File size is a 8.13 KB, right? KB. I want to share this image in internet. Even your selfies, you want to sharing, right? Daily, your forward messages in WhatsApp. Like any image is more than 1500 bytes. What happened? Transport layer will come in the picture. 
is going to divide your data package into smaller smaller segments. When 8 KB file have a image, what transport we will do? Divide it into 15 by 15. We are sharing a, any audio files. If the audio file is a have a one music file, then a song maybe has a 5 MB file size, 5 MB music file. What happened? Transport layer will do what? Divide it. We are sharing any video is a like 5 GB video, a movie. What transport layer will do? Divide it. Like any data packet more than 15 bytes is being divided. So this process we call what? Segmentation. Here are two computers, PC1 and PC2. In PC1, I am trying to share some file. Uh, that is, uh, hello, how are you? Let's consider this file data size is 8 KB. Now, my NSA card can support to transmit 8 KB file. It support can be support. Network card can support how much we say 1500 bytes only, right? Then, how we can share 8 KB file to destination computer? Now, transport layer will come in the picture. What transport layer is doing is your 8 KB file is being divided into small segments. Hello, how are you going to make sure these segments should be contained less than? Then, like after dividing, now data has been transmitted. Okay, data has been transmitted, but thing is, it can be received like this. Okay, proper meaning here. You are, you are sharing a, your selfie, it's been divided. The destination, the destination your friend can receive different emails. Is it possible? Actually, no, right? What transport is doing is after dividing the smaller segments, it will not leave like this. What I'm doing is going to provide sequence numbers for each segment. Like out of five segments, your first segment, your second segment, third segment, fourth segment, fifth segment. Sequence numbers have been given. Now data has been transmitted. Now no problem. Even destination they have received like this also no problem. Why? Sequence numbers are available. Now based upon sequence number, you can reassemble it. First segment comes up first. Second segment, second, third, fourth, five segments. Now we have proper meaning. So this process we call what? Sequencing and reassembling. Segmentation, sequencing and reassemble, error correction, low control, like how many packets have been uh, dropping, how many packets have been transmitted. If any packet has more than 15 bytes or less than 15 bytes, any errors in the packet, error correction, flow control, traffic has been controlled by a flow control, all the responsibilities of a now other
application layer there you right hear me guys copy hello can you open your uh, chat box from my my computer or from your computer you want to send a message to one of your friends WhatsApp, Facebook, whatever, any up to any website. Send the data. What is the first step we'll do? So, first step is either you can open the web browser, I can open the application, right? App. Open app. So, means which layer will come in the picture? Application layer will come in the picture. Like over, after opening the app, you are providing, you are sending a image, or you are sharing a video, or you are sharing a audio, and maybe entering your passwords. So based upon your type of data, like your data original files are being converted to standard format, right? Like .txt files, .jpg files, or .mp3, .mp4 files. So when converting from original file to standard format means, which layer will come in the picture here now? Presentation level come in the picture, right? Like normal text to cipher text, all this do, do, the job will done by what? Presentation. Now from your computer to your friend's computer, from your computer to your destination server, the connection is being establishing, your session is being establishing means is all maintained by which layer here? Session layer. The top three layers. I want to send you a data packet. So to send the data packet, you can use a TCP also, either you can use what? UDP also. Example, you are using here HTTP service, or HTTPS service, or FTP service, or SMTP service. So is all service works under which protocol? TCP. Now what transport layer doing is, okay, TCP services user is utilizing now wait and send one synchronized packet, NAC packet, acknowledgement, now source and destination between connection is established, then your data has been transmitted. If you are using a DNS service, a DHCP service, then what transport layer will do? No TCP three way handshake process directly, fast they can communicate it. Okay, responsibility of which layer, guys? transport layer right now if my data packet size is a 5 mb so 5 mb file can you send your yeah, nsa card can support for 5 mb files no then what transport layer will do will divide into smaller packets called what segmentation so each segment should be less than how many bytes So transport is making sure that every data packet should be in a less than 1500 bytes. Like after dividing a segmentation, what transport layer will do? So simply will do the segmentation in living like this? No, it's providing some sequence numbers. If there is no sequence numbers, we don't have any proper communication. Communication can be mismatched, right? But still we are getting a proper communication means transport layer will providing what? Sequence numbers based upon sequence numbers can be assembled to and from your computer simultaneously you are downloading, you are uploading, you are watching, you are moving, like sending mails. Multiple services is being generated from your computer, and what transport level do? Multiplexing, combining multiple services. So this all the happening in a transport layer, but now let me explain from application layer from application layer data packet is being started data
presentation layer also same data session layer also same data now this data packet is been received by which layer now transport layer now what transport layer will do the transport layer is going to identify this data is belongs to either tcp either udp is tcp then three way handshake process if is udp no acknowledgement fast communication if data is a 5 mb file segmentation and sequencing and reassembling like is all the responsibility of which layer is a transport layer like after doing this, these are the jobs now what transporter will do the data is being transmitted to next layer is what network layer now data packet has been received by network layer so here i have one important question out of all layers out of seven layers which layer have a responsibilities which layer can identify service this data is belongs to which service can identify by which layer the transport layer only can identify service right but now data is comes under which layer now data is received by which layer network layer so what network layer is telling is that i don't know data is belongs to which layer sorry i'm blocking your talk network layer is telling is that i don't know this packet is belongs to data is belongs to which service begin how we can forward it go and drop it if network layer is the dropping the traffic means can it have a com proper communication what transport layer is doing is before sending data packet to network layer what transport layer is doing is is going to add some headers adding some headers called so those headers we call it is a t is th we call transport headers data along with transport header data transport headers combinedly we call it is segment so what is the information inside the tcp transport header means inside the transport header we can have a source port number and a destination port number source ports means this data is belongs to which service which port number source port number and uh, destination port number along with the uh, tcp and udp information so transport header contains source port destination port tcp and udp so data plus transport header both we call it is what segment let me write here clearly data plus transport header okay segment data along with your segment or combined the we call it is what now segment is been received by network layer we discuss clearly layer 1 is physical layer layer 2 data link layer layer 3 is what network layer layer 
is possible. As a network engineer, we required very good knowledge on this layer. In real time also, mostly we used to work with this layer. Layer 1, layer 2, layer 3 and layer 4. Layer 4 is what? Transport. Means TCP, UDP will come under transport. Segment will come under transport. The port numbers will come under what? Transport layer. Layer 3 is what? Network layer. The bottom 3 layers. Top 3 layers are software based. Software layers. What about bottom 3 layers? Layer 1, layer 2, layer 3. The bottom 3 layers we call hardware layer. As we can call it a network support layers. So why we call it a hardware layers? Every layer in L1, L2, L3 layers, one hardware device is being involved. So which device, which layer will come under means, so first one, router will come under network layer, which is layer 3. Router is a layer 3 device. Now, router can understand, router can work with, based upon IP address. So means IP address also will come under what? Layer 3. Next one is a layer 2 device is a switch. So switch will work under layer 2. A switch can uh, work with MAC address. A layer 1 devices is a like uh, simply can say or shortly can say cable. Hubs cable shall work uh, layer 1. Now let me discuss about network layer. The router. Now, topic is network layer. Network layer is layer 3. Which device will come to network layer? Router works with layer, layer 3. Now, routers can understand which address, IP address, it can be IPv4 or IPv6. So, generally, in the network layer, have a two protocols. The first one is a Routing protocol. The second one is a routed protocol. Routing and routed. Both protocols will come under network layer. Let's see this network diagram. Let's consider this is my LAN. One LAN. I am using 10 0, 0, 0 network. This is let's say another LAN or network. I am using 192 1.0 network. Uh, with the name here branch 1 network and branch office 2 network. Branch office 1 network is a 10 0, 0 network, right? What about branch office 2 network 192 1.0? Both are same network or different networks? Different network, right? So, which device is required to enable communication between two or more different networks? We require which device? We call it is a required layer 3 device. Technically, we call it is what? Layer 3 device. So, which is a layer 3 device? Layer 3 device is a router. So, instead of telling router, 
the technical point the technical terminology we call is a lengthy device we require right the router is being configured router is being installed now very important point is here from branch office one have one uh, root this is one of the part for example dot a dot v dot c d dot e All the different uh, routers and the different routes and different paths are available from source to source. From branch office one LAN to reach branch office two LAN, we have how many paths are available? We go via A to B, B to H. It's one route. And one more path is A, A to C, C to F, F to H. Another route. One more is A, A to D. D to E, E to G, G to H. So from branch one to branch three, we have a three routes, right? Out of three routes, out of three paths, which one is a best path? First one is a best path. Why first one is a best path? Because it's easy to access. Right? Because it's easy to access. Only one router, shortest distance. Now let's say example via A B. This link have here five Mbps links. Let's say five Mbps links. And A to C, this link speed is a eighty Mbps link speed. And A to D. This link speed is a forty Mbps link. Now you tell me, guys, which is the best path? A B H. The second path is the best path, right? Why? Well, because if we go by a second path, we have a high speed. Speed is very high, right? Eighty Mbps link. Before you are telling is best path is a via A B H, but now you are telling best path is a A C E A C F H, right? In the real time is we no need to decide which one is a best path. So instead of uh, we are deciding, just configure routing protocols in your router. If you configure routing protocols, routing protocols is going to finding your best path automatically. Routing protocols is going to define the shortest route automatically. The network administrator we know it to define which one is the shortest route, which one is the best. Route. So we have a number of we have a three routes. We can easily find out which is the best. But we have a number of paths is it? My network is a very huge network. Large network is it? How we can find out which is the best path? This sort of work is very complex, very high rise. And what we'll do real time means the real time we used to configure protocols. That protocols we call what? Routing, routing protocols. So what routing protocols will do? The function of routing protocol is a finding best path. Best path selection. Examples of Routing protocols. Routing protocols example. RIP, OSPO, EIGRP, VGP. They are routing protocols. Second point is a routed protocols. Routed. So first one is routing, and second is what routing. What routed protocol will do means. So what exactly routing protocol will do? Routing protocols will find what best path. For example, uh, zero slash uh, sorry, eighty Mbps is a best path, right? Like after finding the best path. Your LAN traffic to carry to destination. 
the traffic forwarding your traffic carried by protocol called routed protocol so routed protocol used to what purpose is a what are the data you have in the lan your data carrying by which protocol is a routed protocol examples of routed protocol is a ip ipx i will talk these all are routed protocol routing protocols will find the best path routed protocols data carriers data carrying two best paths so this both protocols routing and routed protocols will comes under which layer is a network layer it's a network layer after receiving segment this is adding nh nh means what network header segment plus network header both combinedly we call it is a packet segment network header is a packet then what information inside the network header is a source ip address information as well as destination ip address the packet content let me show you the packet the packet information contains ipv4 packet right here source is what 192.168.0.7 and destination ip is what 210.4.194.78 source ip destination ip What is the segment contains? Segment contains source port number, destination port number, the source port, destination port, and TCP size information like TCP segment information. Last line you can see here TCP seg uh, segment data is what 1320 by 2. So, maximum size 1500 bytes. This is making sure less than 1500. And sequence numbers you can see here sequence number. layer two protocol is routed protocol and routing protocol routed protocol ip ipx apple talk routing protocols are rip ohp of ehrp tcp what routed protocols will do routed protocol data so used for what the routed protocol used to carry data routing protocol routing protocols performs what path determination and path selection application to presentation presentation 
one layer is adding header okay both combined we call it this segment segment transfer network layer so it is adding network header layer is what data link layer in data link layer which device will come to data link layer switch switch will works with what mac address right so after receiving packet what data link layer is doing is Data link layer also adding some headers that are data trailers plus along with a packet and data headers, data trailer and header home. Data trailer and data header. DT packet DH combined we call it is a train. Train is being done. In data trailer, we have one protocol called TRC data trailer TRC cyclic redundancy chain. In data headers, we have source MAC information and destination MAC information. Let me open the frame. First line showing is what here frame, right? If you open the frame, here you can get what. Source MAC address, destination MAC address, so this information we call what? CRC, cyclic redundancy. The CRC protocol used for finding errors, detecting errors. Error detection protocol. It provides reliable transparency of the physical layer. It also provides what? Error detection using protocol called what? TRC. The data link layer has a responsibility of finding error, detection error. Then which layer can correction, error correction? Errors are correction by transport layer, errors are detection by data link layer. So, how exactly data link layer is going to uh, finding errors means by using one protocol called CRC. Running some uh, protocol CRC, any errors is this, if any uh, more than 8 bytes, less than 20 bytes, it can send to transport and transport they will correct. Header data, network header segment, packet, data header, data trailer, frame, frame to next layer is what? The layer, next layer, the frame is being converted to layer, frame is converted to what? Like after converts, bits has been converted from your computer, what type of media are you using? If we say copper media, or maybe you are using a wireless media, or maybe you are using a optical fiber media. So, what type of media are you using? If it is copper media, your zeros and ones are converted to electrical signals. 
We are using wireless media. Zeros and ones are converted to radio frequency wave. We are using optical fiber media. Your zeros and ones are converted to light signals in the different wavelengths. Light pulse. So based upon type of media, which type of media which we are using, based upon type of media which are being converted to signal wave, electrical signals, radio frequency signals, light signals. Finally, right, from your computer or from your smartphone, you are sending any data. Finally, you used to start with your friend, right? Send a message, hello, how are you, friend? So send the text message, how many layers are in the digital format and media? All the seven layers in the digital format. First top layer, application layer is the mask to interface and presentation layer. Is it clear now? Hello, can you hear me? All right. So generally, from your from your mobile phone, if you are chatting with someone, if you send any message, see, even if you are sending, you are typing yes, right? When I was a question, hello, how are, can you hear me? Means you are typing yes. So to send the yes, we already you have already opened Webex application application layer your typing is a yes means text format dot txt file is been means presentation layer from your computer to from my computer i mean uh, from your computer to uh, web server session has been established session has been maintained and transport layer will come in the picture like what type of service are you using tcp or udp we are using tcp three way handshake process your data is a 5 mb segmented sequencing reassembling and from uh, around the globally, from where you are accessing now a WebEx server, maybe from your home, right? So my, I am in a Hyderabad location. From your location to my location, have a uh, number of paths are available. So different uh, paths is there, like routing protocol will come in the picture, is finding base route. And transport layer is adding transport headers and converted to segment and converted to packet, packet to frame, frame to bits. And bits to what type of media you are using. If everyone using a Wi Fi means wireless technology, your data has been converted to radio frequency waves and you can, uh, can communicate. If I am using a cable media, wide, copper wire, electrical signals, and different voltages, the complete customer's traffic will go to service provider. The service provider from one country to another country, they use which cable? Optical fiber cable, so yeah, all the data has been converted to what type of signals is a light pulse, light signals. Now everyone know about light uh, speed, right? Speed of light. High speed media we are using, which is so this is how we are. Is working. Means all the layers comes under local is a TCP. Let me do troubleshooting. Uh, let me explain the few points of the troubleshooting points. End user devices are connected to this device. RG45 cable. Switch to router. Enable communication for different networks. Defining the base routes. Data carriers, which is routed protocol. 
order to ISP. Now what is option? ISP to and then comes in a security line, security path. Hello. My side uh, YC is okay. I think uh, from your side, can you check once again? Still, my is my voice is low. My voice is clear and louder. Right. Fine. Uh, now let's see the uh, troubleshooting here. This is the connectivity, our local network, LAN, and all devices are connected to switch and switch to router, router to ISP, ISP to internet. This is a network setup for one office or maybe home. The same thing, right? So first we'll take the example of home network. In the home, if you are not getting internet, not getting internet what we'll do generally how we what we'll do generally give me the frank generally if you are not getting internet by homes what we'll do troubleshoot how we can troubleshoot What, what what troubleshoot you can do mostly? So mostly troubleshoot means your Wi-Fi router switch off and turn on. This is a major major troubleshooting, right? Off and on, right? Exactly. Mostly what we'll do, we'll turn on. restart the modem. Exactly. Off and on. Okay. After restart your Wi-Fi modem, still if you are not getting internet access, then what we'll do? Start what something happened for internet and we'll wait for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or one hour or two hours. But still, if he's not getting internet, then we make a phone call to ISP with loud voice. I'm not getting internet. What happened? It's been two hours, three hours. I have a very uh, urgent work, right? Like we used to phone call. Then what service provider will do? Okay, your complaint has been registered. We'll, we'll come, we can respond within four hours or one day or two hours, whatever, right? 24 hours. So is that happening for home? Then what about for office? If you are working for office, you are a network engineer. You are not getting internet for your office. Then what we'll do as a network engineer? So still, we'll do what? Make a phone call to service provider, right? Not like that. So as a network engineer, we have to find out where was the problem. blindly don't make a phone call to isp so first we have to find out problem is in a your computers or problem in a switch or problem in a router so where's the problem means we have to troubleshoot that the troubleshooting is based upon what oh it's high layers layer one troubleshoot layer two troubleshoot layer three troubleshoot so first let me check layer one troubleshoot l1 what is the l1 layer one is what physical layer one layer one is a physical layer. Which device will come under physical layer? NIC cables are physical layer, right? So first you have to check your PC NIC card is working or not. So your PC to switch your cable is properly connected or not? Is a side cable or cross cable? Which cable is connected? Any breaks for the cable? Now PC to switch both are communicating or not? So this is a L1 troubleshoot. Your patch cards all about what L1. L1 is okay, but still you are not getting internet. Now, layer 2 troubleshoot. What is layer 2 troubleshoot? Layer 2 is a data link layer. The data link layer, which device becomes a data link layer? Switch. Now, switch will works with what? MAC address. So, switch is adding which MAC address? Source MAC address, destination MAC address, and a frame is combining what? Frame. This troubleshooting hardware. Now, log into switch 
and open the Mac table and log into switch and check the Mac table. Source Mac address information, destination Mac address information, any damage with the frames, the frame is okay or not. This is L2 troubleshoot, layer 2 troubleshoot. L2 is okay, switch is also okay, frames are source Mac and destination Mac, everything is fine. Still, if you are not getting uh, internet access now, layer 3 troubleshoot, L3 troubleshoot. So what is the layer 3 troubleshoot? Layer 3 is a network layer. Which device comes to network layer? Router. Now, router can work with what? IP address. In network layer, we have a two protocols will come in the picture. Which protocol will come in the picture? One is a routing protocol and one more is what? Routed protocol. Now, layer 3 troubleshoot. Now, log into layer uh, router. Router maintains a table called routing table. It contains source IP address, contains destination IP address, configured with routing protocols. So now network engineer log into router and check source IP, destination IP, routing protocol, all the information, the packet size, like all the information, right? So the layer three is also okay. Now problem is home. Now problem is what? Provider. I mean, you, make a, you can make a phone call to what? Service provider. And tell to service provider from my side. Everything is okay. L1, L2, L3. The complete in my office. Everything is fine. The problem is yours. What service provider will do is a the service provider will register your complaint. So they can respond very soon. Because the problem for me? Service provider. But generally, what we'll do? No L1, no L2, no L3 troubleshoot. Directly make a phone call to service provider. The service provider after four hours will send the one technician. Now what technician will do? Same thing like one L1, L2, L3. Problem is solved. Service charges final rupees. Now network engineer. No, your company, your network engineer. Your rules and responsibilities is this is your rules and responsibilities. Complete range we need to maintain, we need to manage it. So this range we call. T T E customer premises equipment. So this is complete managed by network team. Maybe five members or ten members or twenty members based upon the organization size. And the CP range is being maintained by network engineers. So what we need to maintain? L1 problems, L2 problems, L2 is completely managed by what? Network team. So we have to maintain the router, routing table, routing protocols, routed protocols, source IP, destination IP, submit mask, and switch, and MAC table, frames, packets, L1 cables, troubleshooting, patch panel, everything is being maintained by network team. This is how in the real time we used to troubleshoot based upon L1 and 2. How we can troubleshoot means yes, customer premises equipment. So from tomorrow onwards, first let me start with uh, L3. L3. Like up to uh, three to four days, we'll continue our sessions what about only L3. So once L3 has been done, and uh, again three four sessions, we'll discuss about what. Layer two. This switch. So once layer three, layer two is done. Now, from public network, what type of attacks will come in the picture? Then we go for what? Security related attacks. Okay. It is all about network. Sure.
so we have done 20 percent of silvers we have covered clearly about it for fundamentals from last for past four sessions uh, okay what is the networks types of networks requirements about nic and media and network devices ipv4 address ipv6 address and how data transmission is happening from one machine to another machine each layer data transmission and the responsibilities that's all about now we have a very clear picture about what exactly happened in the back end of network right we have done our network fundamentals and tomorrow onwards introduction to Any more doubts? Now, uh, let me explain. Uh, See, this is not a process, Sankita, actually from uh, uh, application to presentation, presentation to session, session to transport is not exactly. It's just only for reference. We need one, one, one model, standard model is required. We are following that. But we cannot say data from application, application to presentation, presentation to session, not like that. Application to session, session to presentation, present to transport, transport to physical, it can be like this actually. OSI is only a reference model, not exactly like the proper hand. Only for standard maintenance, we have the number in common. Here, all of you. So let me show you some uh, practical. I hope everyone is being installed your office for packet process software, right? If not installed, you may have one day that will be installed as well. But after install, let me open the Cisco packet software. Yeah. Hi, computers. Connected to Or LAN. Now for five computers, we can assign IP address, right? We need to assign what? Assign IP. Address. Which class IP address? We can use class A also, class B also, class A also. From any class A, B, C, which class is recommended mean is based upon your requirement, host requirement. But again, again, the question is within a LAN, which IP address we use? Private IP address or public IP address? Class A private IP or class B private IP or class C private IP. Example, let me use one class C 
private IP address. Class C private IP is what? 192.168. So for first computer, I am trying to use here 192.168.1.10. Next computer 1.20, 1.30, 1.40, 1.50. Wait one second. This one is device one, device two, device three, device four, and five. This is another network. All devices that I'm using one ninety two, one six eight. 2.10, First network network ID is 192.168.1.0. Second network uh, ID is 192.168.2.0. Now first network five computers can communicate with each other. Yes, they can communicate. The second network five computers can communicate with each other. Yes, they can communicate. Why? Because all are in what same network. Then you tell me, guys, how first network five computers, second network five computers, how they can communicate? The required which device? Come on. So clearly, I am telling here first network is 192.168.1.0, second network is 192.168.2.0. Now both are in same network or different network? Different network, right? Then which device required to enable communication between different network? You required layer three device. So to enable communication between two or more different networks, we need a which which device is a layer three device. Layer three device is a router, right? Now in this in this picture, how many routers are required? This depends upon location. Where network one is placed and where network two is placed. If network one, network two both are in a same office, same room, and same building, same campus, then only one router is enough. One router is enough. Like can connect. If first network is in a Hyderabad location, second network is in a Bangalore. Two routers, one for Hyderabad, one for Bank. Let me design like the same here. We take computers. One, two, three, four, five. Here, one, two, three, five. This switch. So first computer IP address. One nine two one six eight one dot ten subnet mark two fifty five two five zero. Okay. Second computer IP address. One nine two one six eight one dot twenty subnet mark six one. Like you can continue with one dot thirty one dot forty one dot fifty. Next computer IP address is 192.168.2.10. Second computer 192.168.2.1. Now, first two devices can communicate each other. Try with the ping command. The command from use ping 192.168.1.20. Uh, but in between, we require which device is a router and how to connect the router. Connecting router, what configuration is required? Only router connectivity is enough. Now, will they communicate? Means no. We need to do some configuration here. We need to do some. Uh, IP address, then only they can. Let's 
practical value of inner bar. This just we design like this. Now we need to watch tomorrow video. Uh, screen uh, two thirty uh, four thirty for meeting automatically. Now need our screen.